Hello friends, you are all welcome to Human B. We started risk biomechanics classes and we know risk composed of two compound joints. One is radiocarpal joint and second one is midcarpal joint. In the previous video, we discussed radiocarpal joint and today we are going to discuss about midcarpal joint. Midcarpal joint is the articulation between scaffold, lunate, tracheotrum proximally and distally by trapezium, trapezoid, capitate and hamate. So proximally we have scaffold, lunate and tracheotrum and distally we have the distal carpal row that is trapezium, trapezoid, capitate and hamate. These are the articulating surfaces of midcarpal joint. Midcarpal joint is a functional joint rather than an anatomical unit because it doesn't form a single uninterrupted articulating surface. That means the articulating surface is not continuous. So you can call it as a functional joint rather than an anatomical joint. It is anatomically separated from the radiocarpal joint. It has got a fibrous capsule and synovial lining that is continuous with each intercarpal articulations and may be continuous with some of the carpometacarpal joints. The midcarpal joint surfaces are complex with reciprocally concave convex articulation. That means you can see that if one surface is convex, the opposing articulating surface will be concave. So the articulating surfaces are reciprocally concave convex articulations. Functionally, the distal carpals and metacarpals moves as a fixed unit that we will discuss later. Unlike radiocarpal joint, in radiocarpal joint we know the flexion is more than extension and ulnar deviation is more than radi deviation. In midcarpal joint, the range of extension is more than flexion and range of radi deviation is more than ulnar deviation. That means midcarpal joint favor extension over flexion and radi deviation over ulnar deviation. Next we are moving to the ligaments of risk complex. We all know ligaments provide stability. The ligaments also guide and check the unnecessary motion between carpals. There are mainly two types of ligaments. One is extrinsic ligament and second one is intrinsic ligaments. Extrinsic ligaments means ligaments connects carpals to outside. For example, ligaments connects carpals to radius or ulna proximally or ligaments connects carpals to metacarpals distally. Intrinsic ligaments are intercarpal ligaments. That means the ligaments connect the carpals. They are also known as introsious ligaments. And the ligaments can be volar or dorsal ligaments. Volar ligaments means the ligaments that placed anteriorly and dorsal ligaments means ligaments placed posteriorly. It is really difficult to remember the names of the wrist ligaments. So let us simplify that. First we will discuss the extrinsic volar carpal ligaments. It include volar radiocarpal ligament, radial collateral ligament and ulnocarpal ligament complex. The volar radiocarpal ligament include three bands, radio scaphocapitate ligament, radio lunate ligament, and radio scapholuinate ligament. Ulno carpal ligament complex include triangular fibrocartilage complex, ulno lunate ligament, and ulnar collateral ligament. You can see the radio scaphocapitate ligament, and you can see the radio lunate ligament, and you can also see the radio scapholuinate ligament. And you can also find ulnar collateral ligament and ulno lunate ligament. Next we will move to volar intrinsic carpal ligaments. It include scapholuinate ligament and lunotracheotral ligaments. These ligaments are important that we will discuss in the later videos. And you can see the scapholuinate ligament and you can see the lunotracheotral ligament. Next ligaments are extrinsic dorsal carpal ligament. It include dorsal radiocarpal ligament. 
Next, we will discuss the intrinsic volar carpal ligaments. It includes scaphoelunate ligament and lunotracutal ligaments. These ligaments are important that we will discuss in the later videos. And you can see the scaphoelunate ligament and you can see the lunotracutal ligament. Next, we are moving to the extrinsic dorsal carpal ligaments. It includes dorsal radiocarpal ligament. This dorsal radiocarpal ligament converges on tracutum from distal radius and gives attachment to lunate and lunotracutal indrocious ligament. Next, we are moving to the intrinsic dorsal carpal ligaments. It includes dorsal intercarpal ligament. Dorsal intercarpal ligament horizontally connect tracutum, lunate, scaphoid and trapezium. This dorsal radiocarpal ligament and dorsal intercarpal ligament form a horizontal V over the dorsal aspect of the wrist joint. And these ligaments provide stability to both radiocarpal and midcarpal joint. To remember the names of the ligaments of the wrist complex, you can follow these notes. You can classify the ligaments as extrinsic volar carpal ligaments and extrinsic dorsal carpal ligament. And you can also classify like intrinsic volar carpal ligaments and intrinsic dorsal carpal ligaments. In the next video, we will discuss the motions of the wrist complex. Thank you.